as Ryan mentioned in his intro, he talked a lot about the, the Drexler Civit team performance model. And I know that was included in the async uh, learning portion of this you know, program as well. But I wanted to dive a little bit deeper into that model specifically while we're all here together. And you know, it's kind of like, imagine managing a team without any a map or any formal training at all. You know, what would you do? How would you actually lead that team? And what I love about the high performance model is that you can use it when you're forming a new team, when you're a manager who's just become a new manager and you're stepping in to lead people, or you can also use it you know, when a new team ever joins your team. And I, there's a lot of different management models on there for leading to high performance. But what I really love about the Drexler Civit one is that it's very sort of tactile and it outline specific activities that you can do for each stage to lead them to high performance. So let's like review that model real quick. And then we're gonna do another fun breakout activity. So orientation, you know, why are we here? John talked a little bit about purpose, identity, your membership, what's our mission? What are we actually doing? If you can't answer your purpose or why you're here, you can consider folks on your team maybe having disorientation, uncertainty, fear. They don't know what's happening. But if they do, there's a sense of purpose and mission. In stage two, trust building. You know, Chris mentioned the trust piece as well as in Helen's answer. You know, that trust is so important. Getting to know people on a personal and a professional level, what makes them unique. So you build that trust and then you go into goal clarification. What are we actually doing? I remember being on teams where I had no idea what our goals were and there's nothing more frustrating, not knowing what goals we need to achieve as a team. Commitment, how will we actually do it? What are our roles? What are our responsibilities? How are resources gonna get allocated? How are decisions going to get made? So once you've figured out your commitment, you've moved on to implementation. So who does what? And the great thing about GitLab is that we have the handbook. So everything is, our processes are really well documented, probably more than most organizations in our handbook. And a lot of teams get stuck in this sort of triangle right down here, three through five. They call this the Valley of Despair or Bermuda Triangle. But once you can align everybody on the team through stages three through five and one and two, boom, you've reached high performance. You're surpassing results. There's a lot of synergy. There's a lot of spontaneous interaction. One thing I love about high performance is there's a lot of creativity. You know, team members are coming to you as a leader saying, hey, I've got this new idea. I want to go after this new account or, or project. That's high performance. And then renewal. So there's nothing worse than being on a high performing team and not being recognized by your leadership. So your job as a people leader is really making sure you identify when high performance has been met and saying, hey, I need to recognize, I need to celebrate. Of course, if that doesn't happen, that can lead to burnout and boredom.